So today, as, as we talked about, we're going to speak on here, um, the title is The Hiring Matchmaker, and how um, we use aligning our candidate skills and motivations with the needs of our organization as a nonprofit. So first of all, I'd like to share with you why we chose to use ESP. We were looking for something other than a personality test. Um, we know we've heard lots of acronyms and Myers-Briggs and whatnot for personality tests that are out there. But for us, we felt that sometimes personality tests um, truly didn't get to the, ca the work capabilities of an individual. Someone could be a fantastic fit personality-wise for a particular um, department, but not necessarily have the skills that were necessary and able to do the job um, that we were hiring for. We have been a partner with Emergenetics since 2010, and ESP was brought to our attention, and so we thought since um, we've been a partner with them for such a long time that it would be a great time to look at ESP and how it can help us further choose and select the best applicant that we could possibly find for our organization. ESP is a fantastic tool for us because it helps us not only understand what applicants are good at, but actually what they like to do. So each of our departments, like any other departments and organizations, has specific needs for a particular job. And with ESP, you can tailor that specifically for each job in determining what an applicant's um, abilities are, what they can do. And at the same time, we were looking and like the fact that, the, that ESP can also help us determine um, what they like to do. So merging the two together and trying to find the best applicant for us is how we started to use the tool. Now with most new applications in anything, um, we did experience some growing pains. At first, we used ESP. Um, in a way where we weren't utilizing the tool to the best of our abilities. At first, we would um, um, look at applicants' resumes, and they'd be reviewed. We'd have a pool of candidates who would interview, and they'd do some more interviewing. And then it wasn't until the final point, when they were ready to interview with our CEO, that we actually did the ESP testing. And so the hiring manager and the VP and the CEO didn't see the results of the ESP test until after the interviews were completed. And so they didn't have a good um, background as far as what the person likes to do and what they're good at from a job standpoint. And so what we learned from that was um, twofold. One was um, that, again, we weren't using it to our fullest potential. We weren't taking advantage of the results and using them to aid us in the interviewing process. We had the test results, but again, it was after the interviewing process, so it really kind of didn't mean much to us. Second of all, we learned that it would be more cost efficient for us if we learned how to administer ESP ourselves. And so we went through an all-day training to learn the ins and the outs of the test, how to set it up, how to work with each department so that we could facilitate their needs in finding and hiring the best applicant that we could. So how we use ESP now is a much better way than how we were doing it before. We first of all decided to slow down the hiring process. We had always been in a hurry up mode when someone would give their notice that they were leaving and felt that we had to hurry, hurry, hurry and hire somebody. So we decided to slow down the process a little bit to utilize the knowledge that we have gained by knowing how to administer the ESP test. So what we do now is we review the resumes and select a pool of candidates. We then actually have three days that we use um, to pool and look at our candidates. So the first day is we do a brief informational interview with the pool of candidates followed by the ESP test. The ESP testing, the results are immediate once they have completed the test. So we have the, the test results then there now that we can share with the hiring manager 
and the VP so that they can digest the information. Day two, we bring back all of the pool of candidates that we have done the testing for, and they interview with the hiring manager and the VP for about 30 minutes. Having the results of the test prior to the interview with the VP and the hiring manager is great because they can use it to aid in the interviewing process. So for example, if an applicant has indicated that they feel the need to be perfect at work, but their attention to detail wasn't so high and scored kind of low on the test, different questions can be asked by the hiring manager to get at what um, the differences were between um, them, the applicant feeling the need to be perfect in their job, but their attention to detail in the job wasn't scored so highly. And then on the third day, we bring them back in, the two finalists, to interview with our CEO. They interview with our CEO for 30 minutes. And the CEO also has a copy of the ESP test as well, so that she can ask questions and get more information based on um, how they scored and answered on the test. We do not use ESP solely as a determinant for hiring, but we use it in conjunction with the interviewing process. And it has helped us out tremendously in finding the right fit and the right candidates for the position, um, especially too if we have two candidates who have interviewed extremely well, um, then we, if it's a hard decision, we can look at their, um, their ESP test results and then determine you know, which candidate might be the better fit and which one can we um, easily merge into the department um, with a lot less headaches and troubles. We continue to use ESP um, on a constant basis when we have um, new applicants in our pool. For us, it is a trusted tool. We have had previous outstanding experience with Emergenetics and with the profile, and so ESP for us is a nice blend and fit and we're comfortable with utilizing the test for aiding in our hiring process. The ease and the use of the understanding of ESP test is phenomenal. From an administrator standpoint, ESP is very easy to implement. We work with the hiring managers to determine their needs for the tests and where they would like to see applicants score on the test. And from a manager's standpoint, ESP is very easy to understand the results and to assist with the interviewing process. It is clear and concise and can help the, the manager with the hiring process. And ESP ultimately is an excellent, excellent complement to our hiring process. We feel that we have a complete package for interviewing and testing. And so once we have chosen our candidate, and ultimately they've accepted and we've hired the person. The new associate also then completes the profile through Emergenetics and is shared with the hiring manager. And so the applicant and the new associate is ultimately familiar with Emergenetics through having done the ESP testing. And so when they get the profile information, it's easy for them to complete and to understand. Thank you for your time and listening about how we utilize ESP through our organization, and I'd like to open it up for questions and answers at this time. Hi, Kristen. Thank you so much for uh, that talk. I think that it was uh, a really interesting run through in terms of how uh, how your process really looks. One, one thing that you touched on at the very end uh, was something that I think a lot of companies struggle with, which is what does the employee life cycle look like? So you talked about the idea of ensuring that uh, you're hiring someone based on the things that will motivate them and what actually works in terms of their skill set, but and then using Emergenetics to 
uh, gain that more additional information about who they are as a person, the way that they think and act. What's the next step uh, for you in continuing that training around the employee life cycle and continuing that common language? So we, um, we utilize um, the profile is, seems to be the next step for us in that life cycle as far as um, you know, finding out their, their color scheme and how they fit in with the team and make that we team work within the department. And usually um, the profile will show that they have hired the right person based on um, you know, essentially how they had scored two on ESP testing is that it, it is the right fit for the person. And then um, each department hiring manager gets the copy of their profile and so does the VP. And so um, we recently went through um, a profile, um, uh, the profile testing, or not the testing, the, um, the seminar again in our staff retreat because we have had some new folks. And so um, the VP has everybody's profile and they work together um, with implementing the new person into the department um, and seeing their, um, their strengths and their challenges and how they, um, as the new person, can help the department um, achieve their goals that they have for whether it's the quarter or the year or um, as we are ending our calendar year and people are planning for next year um, whose strengths can help each other out with achieving the goals for 2015 for the company. That, that's great, Kristen. And, and that really combines two key elements, which is to uh, continue and extend the culture uh, and that fit within uh, the organization and the new employee, but also to really apply that on a very practical, pragmatic level into the kinds of work that they do, the, the goals that they need to achieve. Uh, and and that, that really seems to, to match up with what would be needed. Uh, another question that uh, we, we, we received was, what are some of the challenges specific to the nonprofit sector in hiring? Um, I think specifically for us, some of the challenges that we have is um, some people get here, um, the culture may not, you know, we are different we are a private foundation, so we're a little bit different than some other nonprofits. And so um, there are times where I think we are, have more of a corporate hat on um, versus a nonprofit hat. And so um, I think trying to have people understand um, in a brief period of time when they've come in for an interview um, what our culture is like. And so for us, um, some people have done their research and they know about the Daniels Fund when they come in, or they have um, talked to associates that work here, or um, they are maybe on the opposite end. They are a grantee, um, and somebody's looking for a change and, and looking for the person to help or look for the organization to help others um, versus being on the receiving end of it. So for us, um, it's making sure that people understand um, this is what we do, um, this is who we are, this is who Bill, Bill Daniels was. Um, we strive wholeheartedly um, to abide by donor intent. Um, Bill set up some specific um, things in the charter before he passed away. And so um, sometimes people are on board with that, sometimes people are not. And so. Um, it's truly, I think, getting to people to understand um, this is our culture and this is who we are and um, helping them understand and hoping that, you know, eventually they have um, come to understand us in the organization and are um, willing to stay. You know, we do have, um, like any organization, we um, have turnover. But on the flip side of it, also, we have longevity. You know, we um, are a staff of 40 people, and so um, there are some people who, you know, we just hired somebody um, two months ago, and there are other people who have been here since the inception of the organization in 2000. So um, we kind of run the gamut of it, but we do our best to, to make people understand and help them understand our culture and the organization here um, as a private foundation. 
That, that's a great answer, uh, Kristen. Thank you for uh, expanding on that. Uh, another question that that has come up, and this actually relates into one of our other uh, popular uh, topics and sessions of today, uh, was the idea of how how are you navigating the uh, new applicants into the workforce, the millennial generation? I I know I, I now live in New York, but I lived here uh, in Denver for several years, and the Daniels Fund is a very uh, well-respected, well-known entity, and, and I would imagine some uh, a very desirable place for people to work, particularly since you're working with young people. That name gets out there. So are there any uh, particular uh, approaches that you take uh, as you're bringing on younger workers, and what, is that, what does that look like in, in the Daniels Fund, in your organization? Sure. Um I'm 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 chuckling to myself because we have I had a meeting yesterday with one of um, one of the younger generations here in our workforce and um, we don't we don't have anything specific for um, generations you know ages when they come in we have a pretty thorough orientation process for any new associate that that comes through here. Um, they meet with every VP and they learn about the department. Um, it's sometimes a two-day process. Um, so they can learn the ins and the outs from um, the VPs and how their position, whatever department it might be in, um, how it works with the other departments and you know how it's important. Um, I think I think what we do is on a case-by-case -case basis as far as um, introducing the millennials and, and, and addressing any needs and issues. Um, we, the meeting I was in yesterday, um, the young woman was very gung-ho and excited about um, doing some new things for our wellness department. Um, and I felt like we were shooting everything down in her foot because everything that she, you know, was excited about and offered up for as suggestions we have already tried as an organization. It didn't fly so well. And so um, I think, you know, we've talked um, after the meeting is that, you know, um, some of the, the young, excited folks that we have, it's, I think it's more of we may take the approach when we do have um, younger folks that join us. Um, it's kind of giving them a little bit more history um, about the Daniels Fund and, and things that we have tried and um, have not worked so well and um, don't try to push the limits on it because it won't, um, given the culture and um, the mindset of um, some of the, the senior management is, um, it's just, you know, kind of not worth the effort from that. So, um, so again, from an orientation standpoint, we, we kind of, we have everything for the same for everybody. Um, it's just kind of those one-offs that we have with the younger generations to kind of get them up to speed where we are culturally as an organization. That, that's really interesting. And uh, that actually touches on uh, some of the things that, that Sean Graber, who was uh, in a session earlier, was speaking about uh, millennials. And you know, I think that whether uh, all of those initiatives would be uh, taken into uh, and started for the organization. Uh, one of the things that, that he mentioned that millennials are particularly concerned about is uh, the idea of, of having that voice and, and being engaged and, uh, and being able to connect in with uh, the culture of an organization. And so I think that you know, even without uh, always implementing brand new things and brand new ideas, uh, having that uh, true cultural sense and uh, weaving that into both the hiring process and the training process is uh, is a really important thing for that audience. Well, it looks like we are about at uh, time, and so I think that we are going to uh, wrap up the session with uh, with Kristen. Kristen, thank you so much for your insight and ideas around what the hiring environment at Daniel's Fund looks like and, and what that 
uh, means for other organizations, other nonprofits, and, and other companies as a whole for bringing in the right kind of uh, workers that are going to be able to transform your organization. So thank you so much, Kristen. Well, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me today. I truly appreciate it.